This Sandra Bland situation got me a little more than upset, y'all. But before I get into that, I have to address something that I've been seeing on the internet. Brothers making videos, lambasting sisters, saying that they are the sole source of the problems with the black community, that the way the hood is right now is because of sisters alone deciding that they don't want to have a man in the lives of their children, that sisters are siding more with the LGBTQ agenda, fighting harder for that than they are for black people, saying that black women have bought the hook, line, and sinker of white feminism, saying that they don't need no man, that, or that our black women's minds are so caught up in the church that they have no earthly good and ain't doing the hood no good as well. And they're saying that black men is too pussy, too weak to hold these sisters accountable to that, and that's why it keeps continuing. And then you got cats like Tommy Sotomayor who find the absolute worst examples of black women I can ever imagine. Like, I don't know where he's finding these sisters. Putting them out there, these highly dysfunctional women, as if they are the representatives of all black women. Like, he don't know who Michelle Alexander is. Like, he don't know who Angela Davis is. And saying that they're hair-hatted hooligans and saying that this is the reason why the hood is so messed up. And my, my retort to y'all brothers is even if you're correct, even if every word that you're saying is true, what the hell makes you think that you can shame wounded people into shining? A wise man once said that there is no remedy in condemnation. Even if they feel a momentary sense of conviction to your words, if the self-esteem is too low, the emotional physics backfire and that self-esteem becomes even lower because you decided to keep it real. All this keep it real talk that we have in this community is nothing but people keeping it real and delicate not finding the tact necessary to make sure that their words are effective and land at the target that they're aimed at. Because brothers, there's so much more going on than sisters just not having a man in their lives. Even if they did buy the hook, line, and sinker of feminism uh, wholesale, why? You're taking a woman who has been denatured from 500 years of colonization and blaming her for this last 40 year bit, saying that she is the reason why things are, are the way that they are from 1970 on into now? Get out of here, man. There's nothing feasible and nothing realistic. And if you had a little bit of critical thinking, you could see that. So I don't want to attack you brothers too hard because you're still my brothers, even though we disagree on that. But what I will say is this. Sisters, I'm proud of you. You are the most educated segment of the population. Per 100,000 black women hold the most degrees of anybody, any demographic that we can state in this nation. You did that. And you are well deserving of applause for that. I don't know where they're finding these completely ratchet examples of what black women are. The, the sisters I know are very complicated, uh, very, um, and, and sometimes simple, very complex, beautiful beings, man. Some of them are PhDs, shop owners, laughter therapists. These are the women that I see around me. So maybe if you ain't hanging around ratchet females, that's a reflection of you, brother. Maybe you need to step your game up because all I see right now is people who are doing the best that they can with what they've been given. So if there is a situation where sisters have forgotten that men are important in their lives, believe me, they're beginning to understand that now. And my only critique of black women is this. Be mindful of how you vent your anger when you are disciplining your children. I don't know how many of y'all have had this experience. You go uh, the experience. You go to the bus stop, train station, whatever, and you see this black woman, this young sister, just venting on her little baby. Sisters, be mindful of that. If you got to discipline your child, if that child's not immediate danger, maybe calm down before you do that, because you're programming the inner voice of that child. If you keep telling that baby that he ain't shit, when that grow, when that baby grows up, he gonna tell himself that. How do I know? Listen to your own inner voice when you mess up. What do you hear? probably the voice of whoever raised you, who had the voice of whoever raised them. And that traces all the way back to the overseer on the plantation. So unwittingly, when we curse at our children, we are bringing their self-esteem down in the same way that the overseer did. The cycle begins to break when you decide to speak with firm, loving kindness to your babies, man. Because if not, that is the mechanism that we make a mental slave. So be mindful of that. We got to step past that behavior. But other than that, and that's not all black women. I would say that that's a majority because realistically we wouldn't have gotten this far if we weren't doing something right up against the obstacles that we are facing. And it's so easy to vent the anger that you should have at your oppressor to those who are closest to you. That's a mistake. I will say this, man. I think that we need to be mindful that if you have a critique of black women, brothers, why aren't you stepping in? 
I'll give you an example. There was a time I was at the uh, a train station, man, and I got off the train, and there was a sister there had this little baby boy. I mean, he was a wrestler, little wild little dude. He was about six years old, you know what I'm saying? And she could not control him. Now, me, this girl, and this baby was the only black people at this train station. Everybody else was white just looking at me. Mm. Look at how she's treating her child. Oh my goodness, those Negroes just can't get it right. And it was slightly embarrassing. And this sister had had enough. She grabbed for her belt and she began to pull it out. And I said, stop. Sis, I'm a mandatory reporter with Denver Public Schools. If I see something, I got to say something. I don't want to see nothing. Put that belt away and I addressed the kid. I was like, little dude, don't you ever embarrass your moms like this when you're out here in public. Let me see you doing that again, and you're going to have to deal with me, young man. Are we clear? And the little boy was like, okay, okay. The bass in my voice, the man, stood up inside of me, and it addressed that little man inside of him, and he got right. Brothers, if you got a critique, step into your community. I don't know what Tommy Sotomayor and them is doing. I got nonprofits. I'm writing grants out here. I got mentorship programs with the homeless black youth of this, country, uh, 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 this city. That's what I'm doing. If you ain't doing that, don't fix your mouth to critique these black women. Because in the final analysis, it is the height of cowardice to vent the anger that you should have at your oppressor, at your woman. You might as well tuck tail right now. Call this a uh, revolution, call this renaissance that we have and over with. Do not be a part of the problem. Because what's getting at me is this. I mentioned Sandra Bland in the very beginning of this video, right? Cats like Tommy Sotomayor, who's writing these videos... Uh, putting these narratives out about sisters. How you know that somebody watching that is not a police officer? How do you know that a cop is not using your very words to justify the dehumanization of black women? You see, when you destroy people, you need propaganda. And the final nail in that propaganda be what those people say about themselves. They can't wait to dehumanize us. When you try to critique us, we are not living in a free and self-determined state right now. They will use your words, brother. When they pull over Sandra Bland or any other sister right here and they will dehumanize them the way that you have dehumanized them. If you call us monkeys, they will call us monkeys. They cannot wait to see, see the black person said it. It's got to be true. Be careful of that shit, man. And I know that the Sandra Bland case is, is yet to be solved right now. I personally know everything's fishy. This, this video is not about that, man. Yeah, they killed him. Period. Point blank. But my point is, is that you better start affirming your people into greatness. This shame and shit ain't working. We've been doing that. It is a dysfunctional mechanism that we learned on the plantation. So to affirm my sisters, at the bottom of this link, I'm going to leave a video that my brother Joshua Bennett made, a poem he wrote, phenomenal poem called 10 Things I Want to Say to a Black Woman. That's what I'm after right now. Brothers, do better. Sisters, make sure that you're giving these babies the best. And I'll talk to you next time. This is Theo E.J. Wilson, out.